Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Murphy's taking a look at a Winchester 1866 that is in 44 center fire. Now, the 66 here is the direct descendant of the Henry rifle. The Henry was the first really practical lever action, and the 1866 fixed a couple of the biggest flaws with the Henry and just exploded as a tremendously popular and very successful design. And it was still using a rimfire cartridge. The Henry used a rimfire, of course, in 1860. In 1866, rimfire is still the predominant style of ammunition that's actually being used. Centerfire cartridges exist, but they haven't become the sort of standardized centerfire that we know today that would actually in fairly short order, totally take over the firearms market. At this point, rimfire is still the thing. The cartridge that was developed for the Henry, the 44 Henry, is not surprisingly, uh, was a fairly popular cartridge and was used in a number of other guns around that time period. So uh, your Colt 1871, your, the, the open top cartridge firing Colt revolvers, uh, those would, were available in 44 Henry rimfire. There were a number of other revolvers at the time that were available in 44 Henry rimfire. Because of the Henry, the cartridge was popular and multi-purpose. So when centerfire starts to become more and more substantial in the marketplace, it's not that surprising that there is an interest in updating and adapting 44 Henry firearms to this new cartridge. One of the big advantages of centerfire is it's reloadable. Uh, if you're out on the frontier, you can take those empty cartridge cases, put new primers in them, and reload them, something that you could not do with rimfire ammunition. And so a small market developed in converting 1866 Winchesters to the new centerfire cartridge, and Winchester would actually get on this as well. Uh, for many years of production, you could actually custom order one in centerfire, and there were a couple of different ways the factory would make that conversion. But both of them are really quite simple. The way the gun is set up, it's not a big deal to alter it from rimfire to centerfire. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this thing, how they actually did that. It's really not that complicated. Now the 1866 was a brass framed gun. Uh, this one was a very long time ago nickel plated, and you can see that wearing off on all the the edges and corners here, uh, and it's a fairly dull nickel at this point, but gives it an interesting look for sure. Uh, but that's not what we're here to check out. I do want to point out the serial number here is in the 130,000 range. We won't see Winchester getting into this center fire conversion market uh, until serial numbers in the 140,000 range and up. Uh, but of course people who owned the guns before that was an option from the factory would periodically want to have that, uh, that conversion made. So the way this works is really pretty simple. On the side of the bolt there you can still see two little notches. Those would have originally been the rim fire firing pins. There were two of them, so you'd get strikes on, uh, on a cartridge at the 3 o'clock and the 9 o'clock positions, and that just increased the, the reliability of the cartridge. Occasionally a single strike you may get a dud round. That still happens with rimfire ammunition. Well if you have a, a double firing pin uh, you're going to have a lot less of that happen. If one, one side happens to hit a, a light pocket of primer compound, the other side will hit a good one. On this however of course we have a center fire firing pin now. And you can see that firing pin right there in the center of the bolt face. There we go. So the way the Henry actually works is, well it's a toggle locked gun, so this is your locking mechanism. When these are straight out they lock in place. When you pull the lever down, right there, it's going to pull this pin down, which is going to force that toggle, that knee joint, to break, and it's going to pull the bolt back. Now right here we have the bolt. And back here we have the firing pin, and they're two separate pieces. So you can see I can hold the bolt in place here, and I can move the inner portion right here independently. So this would have originally had two prongs on the sides as your rim fire firing pins. What they've done is taken those off and replaced them with a single nub in the center that acts as a center fire firing pin. Then the second element of the change is just to take the bolt face and open it up so that there's a hole in the center uh, for the firing pin to come through. 
and you can see that the center of that bolt face is a threaded in portion that has a hole in it, so that's how that part of the work was done. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. We still have extractors top and bottom, although the extractor on the bottom of this one looks like it's broken off. Um, but the extractors work exactly the same way. The rim on the 44 center fire uh, version of the cartridge was essentially the same in dimension as the rim on the rim fire version, so the extractors are going to continue to work exactly the same way and need minimal, if any, modification. It's just sticking a firing pin in the center that needs to be done. The best known, best documented batch of center fire 1866 Henrys is a group of 1,020 guns that were sold to Brazil. Um, these are in the 167 to 169,000 serial number range, and Brazil was interested in them because it had 44 Henry center fire caliber Nagant revolvers, and it wanted to use the same ammunition. And this is in the 1890s. The, the Winchester factory is still selling 1866s, and they're willing to convert them to center fire for people who want that. Um, which wasn't everybody, there were plenty of people who still liked the rim fire ammunition. But I think it's really cool to take a look at one of these. This one of course is gunsmith converted, professionally gunsmith converted, it's a very nice job. Um, and it shows the same basic methodology that the Winchester factory would have used at the time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, thanks for watching.